In this video, we dive into the advanced workings of the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, also known as the Bunker Buster Bomb, which is designed to penetrate deeply fortified structures like bunkers. We break down each step of its operation from launch platform to impact, exploring the critical role of high altitude, advanced guidance systems and the bomb's unique structure. We'll also clarify the differences between the MOP and the mother of all bombs, and explain how they function in military strategy. Join us for an in-depth look at one of the most powerful non-nuclear weapons in the United States arsenal. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more informative videos on advanced military technology. Welcome to our channel. If you're looking for the perfect fragrance that combines luxury and allure, you've come to the right place. Today we're introducing you to some of the finest men's and women's perfumes in the world, guaranteed to give you or your loved ones a unique and memorable experience. You'll find links to purchase these amazing fragrances in the video description below. Don't miss the chance to gift yourself or someone special a luxurious scent that leaves an unforgettable impression. Choose the perfect fragrance and complete your elegance today. There are various types of bunker buster bombs of different calibers, but what sets them apart is the GBU-57, typically delivered by the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. Due to its large size and weight, the B-2 can carry only two of these bombs in its bomb bays. While it lacks thrusters, the GBU-57 is equipped with four active grid fins and a precise guidance system, allowing it to glide accurately to its target using military-grade GPS. Made from a high-performance steel alloy, this bomb uses its sheer weight and gravitational pull to penetrate or burrow up to 200 feet underground, through soil or concrete. We'll also compare the massive Bunker Buster bomb to the mother of all bombs and explain how it works step by step. In the video below, we'll give you an idea of the different levels of penetration power among Bunker Buster bombs. First, let's look at some examples. The Blue 109, also known as the Blue, weighs 2,000 pounds and was developed in the 1970s. This weapon can penetrate about 5 feet or 1.8 meters of reinforced concrete. Then we have the GBU-28, which has a laser-guided system in its nose. It can penetrate to a depth of around 20 feet or 6 meters, equivalent to the height of a two-story building. However, nothing compares to the incredible capabilities of the GBU-57 also known as the Massive Ordnance Penetrator. This bomb can dig over 200 feet into the ground, which is roughly the height of a 20-story building. These examples illustrate the advancements and differences in penetration capabilities among these specialized weapons. Imagine the GBU-57 next to an average human at 20 and a half feet long. It has an aerodynamic streamlined shape, critical for stability and accuracy. With a diameter of 31.5 inches and an astonishing weight of 30,000 pounds, or about 14,000 kilograms, it uses its massive weight to generate the kinetic energy required for deep penetration. This heavy, compact design allows it to pierce over 200 feet of reinforced concrete, making it one of the world's most effective bunker-penetrating munitions. Let's take a look. At the parts of this weapon. The most crucial part is the body shell made from a reinforced cobalt alloy to withstand impact. Interestingly, the body accounts for more than 80% of the bomb's total weight. Inside this casing, you'll find the following components. A nose fuse at the front connected by a fuse tube to the main explosive charge, weighing 5,000 pounds or about 2,267 kilograms. This fuse tube then links to a tail fuse which acts as the primary detonator for delayed activation. Moving to the rear section, we discover the guidance system's intricacies. The inertial guidance system works seamlessly with the military-grade GPS to ensure precise navigation toward the intended target. Besides these components, there's a connector ring for attaching the telemetry antenna, vital for data transmission, along with a cryptographic battery that safeguards sensitive information. Deep within the bomb's structure, we also find thermal batteries that power the system and strategically placed composite fins that help steer the missile towards its target. These fins are precisely controlled by internal gears, allowing them to adjust the trajectory with accuracy. Now, 
Let's examine a smaller bunker buster and how it operates. It has a laser sensor at the front, followed immediately by adjustable fins. In the middle section, there's a 650-pound warhead containing tritonal explosives, a mix of 80% TNT and 20% aluminum powder. Finally, there are retractable fins at the back. To give you a better sense of its size, the casing is around 19 feet, or about 5 meters long, and made from artillery barrels, which are extremely strong, with a diameter of about 14 and a half inches, or around 37 centimeters, making it relatively narrow. This small cross-section means the bomb displaces less material, whether soil or concrete, as it penetrates reinforced bunker layers or buildings. Returning to costs, the development of the GBU-57 is estimated at around $400 to $500 million, with each unit costing about $3.5 million to produce. In contrast, the GBU-28, a 4,000-pound bomb, costs roughly $100,000 to $150,000 per unit. The cost of a single Blue 109 unit is between $25,000 to $84,000 per JDAM set. Let's break down how it all works step by step. Step 1. Launch Platform As we mentioned, the B-2 stealth bomber flies at a very high altitude. When the plane reaches the designated location and conditions are just right, it releases the bomb. The bomb is designed for accuracy upon release and altitude plays a crucial role in its trajectory and effectiveness. Step 2. Target Accuracy The bomb is equipped with advanced guidance tech including GPS and inertial navigation systems powered by military-grade satellites. Step 3. Course Adjustment Then guidance info is sent to the bomb's four tail fins, which can move and adjust in real time. This lets the bomb correct its path as it falls due to gravity. These adjustments are essential since the weapon doesn't have engines to steer, so it relies on these fins and the high altitude drop to control its descent. This is why the bomb must be dropped from a high altitude, giving it enough time and distance to adjust its path accurately. Step 4. Impact and Penetration the bomb, known as the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, MOP, weighs about 30,000 pounds, which is around 14,000 kilograms. When it reaches its target, it hits with force, designed to penetrate deep into solid structures like bunkers. The energy on impact allows the bomb to bury itself over 200 feet into reinforced concrete, ensuring its payload reaches the intended spot for maximum effect. Step 5. Arming the Weapon Two SDB-type fuses are installed as backups, one to sense the impact, known as the G-sensor, and the other with a time delay. Why this setup? It ensures the bomb can strike facilities buried under thick layers of solid material. The fuses are placed at the back of the bomb to avoid damage, so once the time delay or G-sensor fuse triggers, it can explode, creating a mini-earthquake that can bury 20-story buildings or bunkers beneath it. Many people often confuse the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, or MOP, with the mother of all bombs, MOAB, which stands for Massive Ordnance Air Blast. The MOAB weighs about 21,600 pounds and is designed to detonate above ground, creating a huge shockwave and explosion radius. Unlike the MOP, it doesn't have penetration capabilities. This bomb can drill as deep as 200 feet underground before exploding. While the MOP can be launched from bombers like the B-2 Spirit, the same isn't true for the MOAB, which is too large and must be delivered via a C-130 plane using a platform system. Once released, the bomb is guided down by a parachute, then falls with gravity, guided by inertial navigation and military-grade GPS. On April 13th, the US dropped one of its largest non-nuclear bombs on a tunnel complex in eastern Afghanistan where the blast sucked all the oxygen out of the caves. We make original videos from scratch, so please subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos. Thank you for watching. We hope this video added something new to your understanding of recent events. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to stay updated with our daily news. For those interested, we've also included a few recommended products in the description below. By checking them out, you can support our channel through small commissions from YouTube at no extra cost to you. Here at Daily News AI, we're committed to bringing you fair, factual news. 
We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and see you soon.